Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Redesign with Prima Facebook group page. I'm Monica from Half Past Four Design. And if you're here, tell me you're here, where you're from. And of course, I'm not seeing comments again. So hopefully you're out there. If you have questions, leave them. And I will try to figure out why I'm not getting comments. Um, hopefully I don't mess up the screen too bad by pushing these buttons, trying to figure it out. Well, anyway, okay. Today we're going to take the new A1 decoupage paper. This one is titled Peaceful, and I'm going to show you how to decoupage it to the top of a cedar chest. And then we're going to make a couple of molds. I know some of you on the page have had questions about how to make the molds, and I'm going to show you how to the way I like to do it, and then we're going to blend in the edges since um, the edges don't go completely over, they don't cover the whole top. And if you're like me, I'm constantly looking for the perfect piece that one of these papers will fit. And it's really hard to find them, so you have to deal with expanding the edges, and there's easy ways to do that. So. Let's get started. The first thing I want to mention is I like to tear the edges just slightly so you don't have that stark straight line. That helps when you go to blend in the edges. So I've done this side. So I'm just going to work a little bit. I just want to show you just a tiny bit. You don't want to just like go ripping it. But if you can see, I'm just taking a tiny bit off of there. Um, like I said, it just helps to not have that stark, straight line when you go to blend the edges in. Your eye isn't seeing straight lines and going right to it. We've got some, you can see how I tore that. The um, paper itself is pretty thick. It's thicker than a tissue paper. If you haven't tried it yet, um, I think I put my link in the comments for the redesign page. And if it says they're out of stock, just keep trying because these have become really popular. Um, I'm sorry, I am not seeing comments. I don't know if I'm even on the page. So I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, the, uh, the paper, you'll notice when you get it out of the package, it has lines. Those mostly come out pretty much when you do the decoupage. Um, I do use a little bit of an iron, a warm iron with a towel on top to get out the really harsh creases. The first thing I'm going to do for the decoupage, for the adhesive, is use a varnish. You can use varnish, top coats like poly. Um, you can use the Mod Podge. There's wallpaper paste. There's all kinds of adhesive. There's a couple of things on the Redesign with Prima website that are good for the adhesive. But today I've got a can of varnish. It's almost empty, but I've got a new one here in case we need it. Just a regular paintbrush. And I'm just going to just kind of eyeball where I want to put it. I'm not going to measure, um, I'm not really worried about it being perfectly centered because the image itself isn't perfectly centered and that looks like a good spot for me. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and add the varnish in that spot. And 
this paper can take a lot of abuse. I kind of carry it around with me once in a while shopping just because it's easier to kind of pull it out of my purse and pull it, um, put it up next to a piece that I'm thinking about using it on. I'm kind of pulling out the tape measure and remembering numbers because I can't remember numbers for the life of me. And you want to put a decently thick coat. These papers are pretty thick. But you do want to smooth it out. You don't want to leave big logs of it. I think you probably already know that. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that half down lining it up at the top, and it's okay to have it go over, a little bit over the edge, because when I'm finished, I'm going to sand off the extra. And then I'm going to do the other side, and the the more you put on of the adhesive, the easier it is to move it around before it dries. So a pretty generous coat. This old cedar chest used to have a, um, a padded seat on top, and so the wood underneath is not a good wood. It was originally made probably back in the 50s or before, maybe even 30s or 40s, with that padded seat, and over the years it has gotten ripped off. And there were a ton of little nail holes and tack holes that I had to take out the tacks and the nails and then fill those. Decoupage is a great way to cover up a piece that is not in perfect condition. You know what? I feel like I need to go out and come back in because I am not seeing anybody there at all. Um, I hate to do that. If I'm if I'm live, then I'm it's going. We're gonna wing it. We're gonna go with it. We're just gonna pretend like people are watching, and I'm talking to myself. So please go ahead and leave comments. Tell me where you're watching from. If you have any questions. And I will go back and hopefully this is working. Because I am not seeing anybody there. Maybe nobody's in. So I'll keep going because I'm really good at talking to myself. I have a brayer and you don't need one of these. But it helps smooth out the paper and any wrinkles. And where you see the... You can lift this paper up and smooth it back down if you feel like you're getting, uh, the seams aren't pulled far enough. You can even just kind of push along those seams and get them to stick to the glue. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the brayer. And this, this paper is made to look textured. It's really cool. It looks like somebody has actually used a palette knife and applied the paint. So that makes it really easy to do the blending. When I go to do the edges, I can apply the paint that way. And I will show you how to do that. So with this type of paper, I am not really worried about having it perfectly smooth because it adds to the textured look. 
So I just want to go through and find any places that maybe need push down, like along the, the folds that were there. Because when I go to add the sides to this, it's actually, I'm going to add texture to it. So I want to keep some of that texture. Now at this point, you can go right back over it with your uh, varnish, or you can let it dry and come back later to do it. With this piece that has gone a little over the edge, I want to go ahead and apply my varnish because I want it to go ahead and come down. This is the lid, and I want to go ahead and bring it down over that lid. So I'm going to put the varnish on that spot. guys are really watching um, and you know why I'm not seeing any comments please let me know I thought I don't I don't have my do not disturb on or anything I haven't turned off anything so if you know of a setting I'm not even seeing that anybody's on here right now I'm hoping hoping you're there so I'm gonna push this back over the edge Smoothing it down. And then after this dries, what I will do, if you take um, a piece of sandpaper, like a 220 block, and go right along that edge, then you'll be able to take your paper and just tear it right off of there. So I want to be sure I have it all the way to the edge so it can dry that way. It would be much easier to sand when I'm done, and then I, you don't have to mess with cutting it. Okay. I've got the paper on. I'm not going to top coat it yet. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to make a mold really quick. Let me get this stuff out of the way and get my mold stuff here and we will get that started. Actually, I think it might be easier if I bring you to my table. Hang on. I hope nobody gets seasick from moving. I made a couple of molds and I'm going to show you how I did them. This is the redesign with Prima um, called In the Garden and it comes with several different flowers and some leaves and buds and stems. And my favorite way to make the molds is with a fast casting resin, and these are the only three that I poured today, um, and I'm going to do these three again. So the fast casting resin is actually something you can get at the hobby stores, you can order online. Um, it's called Amazing Casting Resin, and look for the kind that says it cures in 10 minutes. Um, the other ones take a lot longer, so this one I have time to show you guys how to use it. When you buy it, it comes with two bottles. And the way you do it is you pour one of each into separate measuring cups. Be very conscious about the amount that you put in. Make sure that they're pretty close to exactly the same. Pretty close to exactly. Or it won't set up right. So... So... 
I'm going to fill the next cup up. I can't even see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. There we go. I'm going to fill the next cup up to the same. There's little lines on these measuring cups, and I think it's close. And then you're going to mix them in another dish. a paper cup or something that you you want to you don't want something you're going to have to wash out because you're going to have to throw this away so you, once you get them mixed just give it some stir mix them up stir them up really well and you'll see that it has started turning white at this point you're gonna pour them try not to over pour into the mold that you want. And I chose the one that looks like maybe a daisy or a chrysanthemum, something like that, because that's the one I want to use on the hope chest. So pour it slowly and it'll, it'll usually fill itself. Give it a second to fill in all the grooves and then you want to make sure that you're, you don't overfill it. Um, that's looking pretty good to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour a little bit into where the leaf and the bud are. Sometimes you have to actually just do a tiny little drop to get it to go where you want it or move it around a little bit. I'm gonna do it the other leaf. And if you have any left over, go ahead and put it in one of the others, even if you're not going to be using it right away. Because somewhere down the line, you will probably use it. And some of these have pretty tiny spaces that you want to fill. Just do it a couple drops at a time and let it work itself into those spaces. Um, and you can actually feel the cup getting warm. It's activating. So I've got a tiny bit left, which isn't going to get me much of anything. So I'm just going to pour it right in the middle of the rose. Otherwise, if I have another um, a mold set out here, I would add that. Okay, so you see the difference right now. This is clear, and when it dries, it's white. So we'll come back here in about 10 minutes, and I'll show you. We'll let that set up. In the meantime, I'm going to take you back over here and we're going to start adding some color to the sides. Um, in certain light, you can see where the um, paper hasn't stuck to the glue or it gives you ridges. It's okay to just push those down as you see them, because when we do the top coat, we'll be able to get the rest of them if we need to. What I've done at this point is I have sat down and mixed up some colors that match these edges that I think will work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start up over here in the corner Sorry. And I have mixed different colors that are in the painting with some um, thickener. And you can use um, a lot of different thickeners. There's salt wash. There, every company pretty much has their own. Um, I will use salt wash or something called Venetian texture, just depending what I have on hand. And we're going to just start applying it with, first thing I'm gonna start using is, this little thing came with the brayer, the Mod Podge brayer. And I'm just going, it's, it has thickened up to where the paint is not drippy and 
The lighting has gone down on me, sorry. I had my garage door open for the light and then it started raining. So basically, I am just going to go where these colors have left off and start adding. probably won't have time today to finish and show you what it's going to end up looking like. This is just the base layer. There are going to be other layers added to this to, fit it, to make it mesh better. And this is going to have to dry. And I'm going to bring it all the way to the edge. And you can also use a brush and do some like stippling. It looks like I'm going to have to do a brush to get into some of these grooves. And it's okay to get it, you know, right in on the paper. You can paint right on these pages. Um, I'm going to add a little bit where I see it extending. And then I'm going to take the purple colors and add those to the edges. And you really can just keep using the same tool. I've mixed a lighter purple, thickened that up really well. You can see it's, you can make it thicker depending on, I mean, you could even take this plastic fork and start using it for your tool. I get, after all this gets on here and dries a little bit, I'm going to take a brush and just kind of smooth it down in places, extend it in others. But this is going to have to be fully dry before I go back and add the other layers. And if you use something like a, a salt wash um, that thickens your paint, after this base layer dries, you can go back and create more texture with, by painting over the top of this when it's dry and then sanding it back. And then you'll get those other colors showing through. I won't have time to do all that today, so I will put it on um, my page, Half Past Four Design, on Facebook. And I will come back here to the group and post it when I'm finished so you guys can see the end result. I know this looks like a big mess, <laughs> and it really is right now, but don't worry, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna fix it. But this is where the fun is. You don't have to be perfect with your paintbrush. You just wanna give it some texture, smooth it out, And then we're going to move, actually, I'm going to get out the next color, which is kind of a, this is a black, kind of an army green mixed in there. So I'm just going to do a little bit more of that greenish brown that I had, and then I'm going to go back in with some black and charcoal gray. And I know this looks like a terrible mess. Got some black and charcoal gray mixed together. It's pretty darn thick. Just gonna add that in, bring it down over the edge here. I think I'm gonna need a brush. Just um a little chip brush will work to get it into the grooves of the lid. And I'm not worried about getting it on the body because I am, that is not painted yet. I don't know what I'm doing to the color just yet. So then the brush, you can just kind of blend and you can see on the camera, it kind of just um, 
blend those two colors without really mixing them. And then I'm going to go back in those spaces. And then you can see it turns into something that's not as harsh as it started out to be. So a lot more of that blending. Bring it into the paper. In little spots. The um, purple needs a little bit more. And then we're just going to let that dry. There's going to be many more layers, but this one needs to dry first. But you can see where I'm going. So, okay. Hey, I don't see any comments still. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm not seeing comments today, but I do see that I have people watching, so that's good. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to move on over here. I'll show you how to blend over on this side with some different colors. And like I said, I will go back and show you what I've done. Um, on the page when I get it finished. And before Shannon, hey, I see a comment. I finally have a comment. What has been going on? I've been talking to myself. I don't know what has happened. I ha I've been talking for probably 30 minutes to nobody, I bet. So, hey, thank you for joining me. I just got one comment, finally. I saw Shannon on there. Thank you, Shannon. Shannon is from All Things Newly Rustic. And if you have any questions, since I can't see the comments, type them. Shannon can help you, um, or I can go back and answer them when this live is over, because I have been talking to myself for a very long time now. Okay, before I start painting on this spot, hopefully you guys saw the part where I was making the molds. And as you can see, they are setting up and starting to turn white. They turn white um, as they dry, as they cure. And I'm gonna let them stay in there because it's probably only been five minutes, maybe seven. And I can still feel that they're warm underneath, which means they're activated. So we're gonna go ahead and let those sit a while longer before we take them out. In the meantime, I have added thickener to different colors of paint. Um, and I'm showing you how to blend in the edges. So, let me, let me get my tools here. And if you're just joining me, I'm using different tools to blend to get the texture that we have in the paper. You could use a little credit card. This is a little Mod Podge thing that came with the brayer. You can, you can use spatulas. And I've added thickener to the paint. And I'm just putting a base coat on to begin with. So I'm just, I picked some colors that are close to the colors in the painting, the paper. And I'm just making them look the same with the texture. This will just be the base coat. It's not as scary as it looks. I'm still not seeing comments, guys. I'm really sorry. If you have questions, I think I've been out here in um, internet land talking to myself for 30 minutes. So thank you for joining me. I'm Monica from Half Past Four Design. And hopefully the video, the beginning of the video is out there and you can go catch whatever you missed. I have mixed up several different colors. This is kind of a brick red that I wanted to use over here. 
After you thicken the paint, you just can go back and use a spatula or a putty knife to get the same look that's in the paper. If you look really close at these papers, it looks like a real painting. It looks like someone has used a putty knife um, and painted on texture. So to get that look over here, I'm really basically doing that. This is going to be the base coat. And then I'm going to go ahead and add um, more paint to the top of it in layers to get that look. I know that looks really scary right now. Don't freak out. And I, I see I didn't put enough adhesive under this corner. So I'm just going to go grab what I had, which was my varnish. And I'm going to stick a little bit down in that corner. It's also something I could do when I put the top coat on. I haven't top coated it yet. So you can always go back and do that. Um, I think the next color I need is to mix in some black to darken this red up a little bit. So I have gotten like a charcoal black color, a chip brush, I've thickened it up, and I'm just adding straight into the red. This is all going to be blended eventually. Right now I know it looks really scary. Don't let it scare you. I will post the finished project on the page to show you guys how it ends up. It might be a couple more days before I get finished, but be watching for it. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing comments. If you have questions, go ahead and leave them. And if you know how to fix my comments, let me know. This is the second live that I haven't been able to see the comments, although I did see Shannon's pop up. Shannon, are you still there? Type something for me. I'm not seeing anything. Oh. I guess that wasn't your comment. That was a message. So I guess I'm not seeing any comments. Sorry guys, I'm gonna get it fixed. So this is the base coat. This is gonna get several more layers. There's thickener in here. I've used like a salt wash. Um, there's a lot of different thickeners out there. You can use different paint companies have their own. I've used quite a few of them and they're pretty all pretty much about the same. You have your favorite. I do like salt wash. I don't sell any of it. Redesign with Prima's website or your retailer. You can get like a gesso or something. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry before I get too carried away. Um, and then when this base coat dries in a couple of hours, it's going to take a couple of hours, I'm going to go back and put some other colors that are in the painting, like these purples I will pull out. I'll probably add more of the black to this. But I want these colors to poke through. Um, so when it's dry, I'm going to go ahead and cover it with other colors, several more layers, and then I'll probably sand back and when I sand it back, these colors will peek through the top coat. Okay, um, sorry. Just still trying to get comments. Okay, so last thing are the molds. I poured the casting resin in. It's been probably a good 10 minutes and they look good and dry. They're pretty darn level. We got them at the, didn't over pour. And then all you really do, these molds are so, so uh, bendable. All you have to do is very gently bend the mold around where you poured. 
and careful if you feel like it's still sticking don't force it just put it back in and let it cool or dry some more but help it a little bit you can see I'm pushing my finger up into that middle section help it out a little bit you don't have to use any spray or cornstarch on these when you're using the casting resin I didn't put anything in there first so here's the flower that turned out really great. I'm going to put that on the front of the hope chest. And then the, some of these smaller ones that have all the intricate edges, you just work those a little slower so you don't tear the, like the stem there. Take your time. And then there's the leaf. If you guys didn't see me pour these, because I have no idea if I was even on live when I did it, even though it said I was, you can go back if you want to know how to do it and watch the beginning or right into the, probably after 10 minutes in, is where I poured these. And I used the amazing casting resin that you can get at any hobby store. You can order this online. We measured it and poured it and mixed it and um, it's very easy they come right out I did not use any cornstarch or anything to not make it stick and this is how easy they pop out you have to you have to be sure that you mix your product equally though and all the instructions are in there This is how easy they pop out. And then I had a little bit of resin left that I wasn't able to fill this. I just put a little bit in. That might come in handy for something that I do down the road. I don't know. It's like the little center of a rose. It's kind of cute. You can always use that somewhere. Even though it's not a full rose, you've got the center. Okay. Let me show you the big picture here. This is the hope chest or cedar chest. And let me recap this really quick for those of you that didn't find me to the last second. Um, I've taken the cedar chest and I applied varnish before I put the paper down. Just a clear matte varnish. You can use satin, you could even use gloss. Um, and as you can see, I put my hand right into the paint over here and got a big glob on my hand and then I touched right here, so it's right there. Which is typical Monica. Those are the things that I do constantly. But we can save that by getting some water. Okay, you guys, it's okay to laugh at me. It's just typical. So what I'm going to do is get a little water on a towel. And this paper is pretty darn sturdy enough that I can just wipe that right off. And you know, even if it doesn't all come off, it blends in. <laughs> it blends right in. And if you have residue on there that you don't get off after this fully dries, you can go back and wipe it up. Okay, if you guys have any questions, I'm sorry I'm not seeing comments. Um, put them out there and I will answer everything. Thank you for joining me. I will post this when it's finished on the Redesign with Prima page and also my Facebook page, which is Half Past Four Design. 
And I have a website, halfpast4design.com. I'm on Instagram under the same name, Pinterest. And um, thank you for joining me. I think I'm going to put these molds here in the front. I don't know. And if you guys, hey, if you have some suggestions about what color to make the body of it, like I said, this is only going to go to the edge, so I'm going to have this off. Do I continue the color, or do I make it all just, I don't know, what are your ideas? Shoot them, throw them at me. And um, I will let you go, and thank you for joining me. Next time, hopefully, I can get my comments working and we can talk instead of just myself. I can talk to the, all of you. Thank you. Have a good day.